heavy rain, flooding, and wet roads in North County with the 78 freeway completely flooded out. I'm in Mission Valley where roads are flooded and people have been evacuated. The Chula Vista golf course shut down because of flooding. We'll take you on a tour of the South Bay. Plus, on this day when we honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we look back on one of the civil rights icons' visits to San Diego. And we're taking a swing at 2023 with the two-time world champ. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A day of water rescues, flooded roads, submerged cars, storm damage, and more heavy rain across the county. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. San Diego definitely needs the rain, but not all of it at once. And not with all these problems. Our CBS 8 team has been getting soaked today working for you. Let's get right into it with our Brian White, who starts us off with how the rain shut down a freeway. Brian? Early flooding forced the closure of the 78 freeway, both eastbound and westbound lanes at El Camino Real, causing absolute gridlock. Stand still, no movement, no movement. Shea McMinn was commuting to work this morning when she got stuck during the closure. Coming from San Clemente, I have been on the highway for an hour and a half sitting because navigation didn't show that there was a closure. The westbound lanes here were open by 9 a.m. and it took another hour to get two lanes open on the eastbound side. You can see Caltrans workers doing their best to clear this backed up storm drain. The flooding was caused by overflow from the Buena Vista Creek that runs alongside the freeway. A few miles away in San Marcos, the driver of this black Mercedes told me he hydroplaned on the 78 and spun around before plowing through the chain link fence here and down the small embankment. He suffered some minor injuries to his face and seemed to be walking with a limp, but fortunately he said he was doing okay, considering. And nearby at the Valle Verde Mobile Estates, backed up storm drains caused flooding here on the road. The standing water encroached on a few property lines, but at least no real damage was done. Nearby on Johnston Lane, Edward Uriarte and his mom, Francisca, saw severe flooding that damaged their bottom floor. So basically the water level reached like this level right here. Their home sits at a low point on the street and it's right next to the Buena Vista Creek, which overflows here during a heavy rain. It's a lot, a lot of stress. I don't sleep. It's always says take care of out to the house because the water coming from different places. For them, trying to prevent their property from flooding feels like a helpless endeavor, and even these sandbags don't stand a chance. We're trying to like do what we can. Like we, as you can see, like there's a lot of damage, a lot of mold, a lot of like just disaster. For now, they're just happy that no one was hurt, but the cleanup is no doubt going to require a lot of time and money. In San Marcos, Brian White, CBS 8. All right, Brian, thanks. Mission Valley is always a storm trouble spot, but tonight it is worse than we've seen in years. Some have lost their cars. Others have lost everything they own. The CBS 8's Ariana Cohen continues our team coverage tonight. This road is Hotel Circle Place, where cars are partially underwater. Tenants had to evacuate from this hotel due to flooding, and people living in the riverbed were helped by advocates to find a warm and safe place to stay. Two cars submerged at Mission Center Drive and Hazard Center Drive. This car stuck near Riverwalk Drive. Crews rushed in to rescue the drivers. Like, you can actually hear it. Like flowing like it sounds like a running river right now. It's pretty wild. Guests staying at Riverleaf Inn evacuated while many cars are underwater at Hotel Circle Place. That's my 2021 Kia K5. That's the only car we have, so I don't know. I don't know what to do next. It's dangerous. It's miserable. It's just it's like the worst episode of Survivor you could ever imagine. <laughs> Nikki Brackeen is homeless and has been living in the San Diego Riverbed for the past several years. She lost all her belongings in the flooded waters and had nowhere to go. Luckily, these two generous women who advocate for the homeless population quickly came to help. Um, I know what it's like to lay my head in that riverbed. And I um, 
I refuse to leave people behind like that. Everybody deserves love. We put a lot of people in hotels um, in the past 24 hours. The nonprofit Housing for Homeless has placed more than 20 people in hotels for the next three days and provided food. Brackeen is grateful for all the help. I'm going to go to uh, my hotel room and sleep and shower and be warm. My fairy godmother, guardian angel, <laughs> she's like so cool, dude. She is the best person. She came through when I really needed help. I may not be able to save the world and none of us can, but I my hope is that I make a difference in somebody's world enough that they remember that they matter. Ariana Cohen, CBS 8. From North County to Mission Valley, the CBS team has spent the day spread out across San Diego looking into the highest areas of rain concern, and you've seen it all so far, and there's more. CBS 8's Anna Laurel shows us the flooding at the Chula Vista Golf Course. I'm here at the bridge that typically takes golfers over to the ninth hole. You see where those ducks and the Canadian geese are in that little pond? That's typically a fairway. This is the Sweetwater River that runs from the Sweetwater Reservoir through Bonita all the way to Chula Vista. And right now this river is running over. Our CBSA drone captured this video today. The Sweetwater River flooding parks, a private driving range, and the Chula Vista Golf Course, a river that is typically just a trickle, today overflowing its banks. I've been coming here forever, and I've never seen so much water. Oscar Quesada and his son had a 12:20 tee time. Yeah, they wouldn't let us out there. It was um, really bad. Hole three was completely underwater. The Chula Vista golf course shut down. Water from the river so high it even came into the pro shop. While we were here, we got a call about a water rescue off Main Street at Hollister. When we got there, the truck that was stuck was out of the water but had a dead battery. All the waterways in the South Bay are swollen. A woman tried to drive her large SUV along Monument Road, but the overflow from the Tijuana River, too strong. Crews had to rescue her and leave her vehicle behind. You don't want to be stuck halfway and be able to go through. In Otay Mesa on Airway Road, low-profile vehicles were no match for rising water there. Same with this car on Otay Lakes Road near Hamul Creek. Back in Bonita, I actually called 911 about this huge eucalyptus that started to fall. Large limbs dropping just inches from Bonita Road. And just down the street, this tree fell on a local coffee shop. Over at Roar Park, it was empty except for Mila. We just rescued her almost three months ago, so this is her first time going in the puddles and getting super muddy. Joe Bantoa works at the Chula Vista Golf Course. He says the weather has never shut down the course. We wanted water for the fairways here, but not that much. All right, so when we were going around town today, we heard from several people that told us that they had heard that the Sweetwater Reservoir was releasing water from the dam, and that's what was causing this flooding. But we called the Sweetwater Authority. They say that their reservoir is only at 29% capacity. They are not releasing water. That's what they told us. Out here at the Chula Vista Golf Course, I'm Anna Laurel for CBS 8. Thanks, Anna. And tragedy in Tijuana when a house collapsed, two, killing two girls. It happened this morning in a neighborhood in the southern part of the city. Rescue crews were able to save two adults, but a 7-year-old and a 14-year-old died. There were a couple of other collapses in Tijuana in the Campos and Pan American neighborhoods. We're told three people were hospitalized. Besides the flooding, the heavy rain also soaked the ground in uprooted trees. One tree came down on Cass Street in Pacific Beach, and a few blocks away on Ingram, another tree fell across power lines. At least one car suffered damage when the tree fell right on top of it, and thousands of people were left without power. In Sara Mesa, a tree fell into an apartment near a bedroom window where a mother was asleep with her baby. Fortunately, no one was hurt. All that in the rain, it's not over yet. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Carl Carleen Chavis, she's here early tonight with your first microclimate forecast. Carleen, you've been tracking the storm. Yes. Don't let our guard down yet. No, but the plus side is that the rain that we are expecting tonight through tomorrow morning is a lot less than what we've seen over the past three days. We have seen just astronomical numbers. When you put in perspective that what we typically get on a daily basis, maybe a few hundredths of an inch, around a tenth of an inch, we have exceeded that by more than two inches for most of the county. Some areas even saw the most rainfall for Southern California. We are looking at some scattered light showers right now, but the big story is definitely areas that are 
are still impassable. You're talking about near the San Diego River and Mission Valley, also talking about Santa Margarita River, and that is at flood stage, and it's not expected to lower until we get past about 11 p.m. for tonight or for Tuesday. But when you're looking at a more expansive view, we are not done just yet. We still have that area of low pressure that is over us, and so this is that second system. It's also a colder one. That's going to bring in the snow for tonight. And when you're talking about areas that have already seen a lot of saturation, Palomar Mountain has seen the most rainfall of all of Southern California with this recent storm over the past three days. Down trees will be an issue because now you're going to also add gusty winds and snow to the mix. So we'll go ahead and take a look at our complete forecast coming up. Marcella. Thanks, Carlene. And you can show us the weather where you live. What does it look like in your area? You can share your photos and videos right on our CBS 8 app. Just go to the Near Me section right there at the bottom and then tap on the Share With Us button. And the County Office of Education tells us some mountain area school districts will not have classes tomorrow because of the weather. They're right here on your screen. Julian Union Elementary and High School Districts, Mountain Empire Unified, Spencer Valley, and Warner Unified will not have classes tomorrow. An email from a viewer named Cheryl asks us, is all this rain going to help California's reservoirs and will have a short or long term effect? So we went right to work to find out and asked meteorologist Sean Stiles to take a closer look. So the question I've been asked for the past two weeks, Sean, is the drought over with all this rain? Well, it all depends on how you look at your reservoir. Is it half full or half empty? The parade of storms that have been pounding the West Coast since mid-December have ridden on a conveyor belt of moisture known as an atmospheric river. As these storms come across the Pacific, they can pick up as much as 15 times the amount of water found in the Mississippi River. And these storms have not let up, according to Alex Hall, climate science director at the University of California, Los Angeles. This does feel like we're on the express train part of this. We are on the express train for sure. It's been storm after storm, but they're very important. The main source for moisture for the, for the western part of the U.S., especially the coastal states. California is known for its boom and bust weather, and scientists are saying climate change is making droughts last longer and rain events like the ones we're seeing now more extreme because warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture. So when the rains come, the heavens open up. That refills reservoirs and builds the snowpack in the Sierra Nevada, which is at 200% of average right now. Sean de Guzman is with the California Department of Water Resources. Our snowpack is actually off to one of its best start in the past 40 years. The problem with the rain coming so fast is that our water collection systems are designed to prevent flooding. So most of this rain is going into the ocean, like in the Los Angeles Basin. So none of this water is going to do us any good here? Very, very little of it. Bruce Resnick, Los Angeles water keeper. We capture about 20% of our storm water. Between the storm last week and the storm that's happening now, I bet we're going to see 20, 25, 30 billion gallons of water just going out the LA River into the ocean. In Los Angeles County, they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars to capture more runoff with ground spreading so the water can seep into the soil. Is this a drought buster? Is this a drought denter? Do we have any idea? We are getting exactly what we need to bust the drought, but we still have two thirds of the wet season to come and we could get very little precipitation. You know, it's very unpredictable. Here in San Diego, over 80% of our water is imported and then dispersed to the holding reservoirs around the county. So what matters most is how much snowpack will be in the Sierra Nevada and the Colorado Basin come springtime. So with all this rain, we are sitting pretty as far as water is concerned, but keep in mind it's mid-January. So we've got January, February, March, and April. If we go dry, Things could change, so keep conserving that water. Sean Stiles, CBS 8. Thanks, Sean. Still ahead tonight, can a sitting member of Congress be removed? We verify. But first, House Republicans want to know who visited President Biden's home in Delaware as an investigation into the mishandling of classified documents gets deeper.